Hello and welcome to this September edition of Community Connect. This month's guest is Cam Bailey. Cam is with uh, Marshall Community Services. Thanks for being with us this, this month. Hey, thanks for having me, Brett. Absolutely. Lots of things to talk about with Marshall Community Services, but I want to recap the month of August first, and then we'll kind of talk about what to expect uh, with Marshall Community Services this fall and winter. So uh, obviously August was not a, a typical month in the Marshall area. You, you know, you think of the sounds of summer, the Lyon County Fair, and, and many other things that probably didn't happen. But we got, we did have a lot of, a lot of things that did happen. So let's talk about that. Um, golf tournaments, there has been a ton of golf tournaments that have thankfully been able to happen this, uh, this past summer. Uh, you know, at the beginning of the month of August, we had the Farmers Open, Farmers Open was uh, maxed out once again, the member guest tournament, which brings in you know many many different people, because uh, it's a member of the golf course and they bring in the guests, which often oftentimes they'll come in from out of town. A lot of people came in for that. The Maha golf tournament uh, happened in mid August. The superintendent's uh, revenge tournament was this past week, and I don't know if you drove by. I know you live near the Marshall Golf Course. Did you see some of the holes on, on, on at the golf course? I've seen some of those pictures. Uh, it, it looked like a lot of different uh, apparatuses in front of the <laughs> greens, and pretty cool. I mean, way, way to think outside the box a little bit, and looked like a good event. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you'll see there's some piping, and then I saw some equipment right by the hole. They made it really, really difficult. The superintendent uh, made it really difficult for the players this past week, but as you said, it was a very creative way to do things. Sam which right in the middle of all the tournaments this past uh, past month was a junior golf tournament. So uh, Marshall Golf Course and some of the area golf courses have stayed busy, thankfully, uh, throughout the summer. Traveling Trivia in August was at the Legion. Uh, they had 10 teams that showed up to play. Uh, good for the Legion to uh, get that much business uh, here in town uh, with a, a, several, uh, several, you know, it's five, five persons, uh, five people per team. Have you played Traveling Trivia yet, Cal? I haven't, you know, but I've seen the craze as you guys have started this, and it seems like every night you guys host something like this at a different uh, establishment in town, a great attendance. It is, it is. You know, it started uh, actually one year ago this month, and it has been as high as 150 people. Unfortunately, with the way it's set up right now, they give pieces of paper uh, with trivia questions to the guests, so it's not like everybody, everybody is there at once. But right. it'll, it'll get back to... Um, normal here at some point. The Chamber of Commerce, we hosted our State of Agriculture event uh, on Tuesday the 25th. We had 90 people show up. It was under the Hoop Barn at the Lyon County Fairgrounds. It was a perfect setting. The Lyon County Farm Family of the Year was also given away that day. Con uh, congratulations to the G family. And uh, overall, we had five really good panelists. It was uh, well received and I look forward to having it again one year from now. Uh, and then lastly, I wanted to touch, about, touch on, I know, Cam, I know you probably have a few things to say about this, too, but the big announcement about the NAHL's Fairbanks Ice Dogs that are temporarily moving to uh, Marshall and the Red Baron Arena. So this is going to be in October through December. And as I was reading the press release, what excited me much, uh, as much as anything is that all the games will be, will be uh, streamed on NHL TV, which means there's going to be millions of pot potential people right on, right on, uh, right here in Marshall. Right, and you're exactly right. The uh, the exposure that the Ice Dogs get, not only locally but nationally, is is a big deal. And uh, you know, you're getting a lot of those hockey players that are coming from all over the states, uh, competing. And, and from what I've heard, the hockey is pretty legit. Yeah. You know, so um, talking to some of these hockey folks in town. Some good, uh, good competitors, good uh, hockey coming into town here in mid-October. Um, we're excited for that. Uh, so watch more press releases as that information rolls out because this is all new territory for Marshall. But mm -hmm. what a great way to, to showcase the Red Baron Arena. All right, and who knows what, what could come with this. I mean, uh, you know, if it's temporary, what could become permanent here in the future? So anyway, so that's what it, some of the, just a sampling of the things of August. I'm sure I didn't touch on some of the things, but uh, let's move on with our guest. So I, uh, you've heard from Cam a few times. He's with Marshall Community Services. You know, you're going to be in the same boat as my last two guests. Last two guests were the two, the two um, activities directors from SMSU, Chris Himaleski. Last month was Bruce Remy from the public schools. You're kind of in the same boat as far as activities. You know, you, you come up to the summer and you don't think you're going to have a lot going on. Marshall Community Services delivered. There were some things that you were able to do. Let's yeah, touch on you that. you know, and first, big shoes to fill with Bruce and Chris before me. But <laughs> no, no, the, again, thanks for having me. And, and you're right on. The, the, back to March, you just didn't know what was going to happen. 
you know, talking to a lot of these families, they were just looking to, to try something, get something, it's a little normalcy in their lives. So we got to about middle of June and following all the guidelines in place, and we were able to offer a lot of different programs throughout the summer. Again, it started a little later than normal, mid-June, but we extended that into to late, uh, late August, and um, the families were just thankful for having uh, something this mm -hmm. summer. You know, you, you kind of reflect back on, on your summer uh, days growing up, and you don't get that back, you know, when you're 12, 13, 14, it comes and goes, and, mm -hmm. and you move on. But uh, we were able to have a lot of different camps and clinics uh, this summer, if it was uh, gymnastics, if it was uh, track and field, a basketball camp, so we were able to do that. Um, this We were able to host a summer league basketball league where some teams did come into the, the uh, facilities and play some summer league basketball. Again, as I say this, we followed all the guidelines, did right. everything we could. In fact, yep. the summer league, um, it was, there was no fans. Um, it was just your officials, your game management, and your players. And, and talk about feedback from the coaches and players. Like, hey, this wasn't so bad. You know, I don't <laughs> think they want to make it a long-term deal. But uh, for this summer, uh, you didn't have the, the, the fans in the stands, you know, saying what they say. But, right. um, so we were, we were able to host that. Uh, of course, uh, adult summer softball and volleyball, those uh, seasons have just been wrapped up here now. So they were having a, a little extended or less extended season. But again, just that outlet, you know, get we were all kind of in our houses from March to April into May. And just to have that that social aspect of our lives to get out and, and participate mm -hmm. uh, was 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 great. And uh, talking about the Marshall Aquatic Center. Again, what we're, we're, we're going back and forth on do we give this a shot or not. And again, reflecting back, it was a great, uh, great summer at the Aquatic Center. We had uh, many memberships sold. A lot of people come through. And, you know, you're a little hesitant as you open it up and you say, how's the feedback from the community? And, and I couldn't, I mean, they were awesome. They were, they followed the guidelines, followed the rules in place. Uh, big kudos to our staff and our lifeguards because, again, they're the ones that are, that are there all day long. Um, we made adjustments on some timing things and way you purchase memberships and things like that, but the neat thing was is everybody followed what was in place, mm -hmm. and it was a great summer. Um, and and you, you look back at the weather, what a great summer for weather. I think we had out of the 60-plus days we were uh, open, like two rainouts. So the weather was great, and uh, granted, it was, it was a great summer. You blink, it's over, and now we're into September. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I've talked about on this show... Uh, many times about the, about the weather. I mean, if there's been anything that's been good about these last five, six months, it's been the weather. You know, when it comes to agriculture and the course of your activities in the summer and having the Marshall Aquatic Center open, it's it's been it's been uh, we've been blessed with the good weather. That's for sure. So, Cam, you have the fall guide right in front of you. What about this fall? What, as, as parents look through your guide, what can they expect? Yeah. So hot off the press, here's our uh, our fall brochure. We of course you got a great looking leaf there as the uh, the colors change uh, from season to season. So this will be out to all mailboxes um, here shortly, if, if not today, in the next couple days. And it's, again, jam-packed full of different programs and activities. It looks a little different than years past. We have a, a safety plan in place, and we've got uh, just, you know, just different things from online courses and things like that. But for the most part, and I, I'm more on the recreation side than the community ed side, a lot of what we're doing is the same um, for the most part. So our, our fifth and sixth grade and our seventh and eighth grade uh, football, our numbers are, are just like they were last year. You know, we were kind of like, ah, you know, will less people sign up just with all the things going on. But again, we're taking the right precautions. We're taking the right uh, approach on how we're going to, you know, again, spread out things and things like that. But um, so football in fall, you know, of course, there's no high school, Friday night football mm. and things like that. They're having some practices. Um, so we're uh, we're excited to again offer that again little changes in the programs where it might not start on time it, it it's pushed back uh, till that second week of september and the key there was as we were going through the brochure and, and putting the, the classes together is we wanted these kids to get off on the right foot for school you know we know that school and there's diff many changes in in their schedule and times and things like that so you'll see in our brochure um, a lot of different programs that are starting after school started. Um, you know, just again on my side, not only uh, tackle football, but flag football. There's cross country camps, there's tennis camps, there's disc golf. Ryan here in studio is going to offer some rugby, uh, teach some kids on, on rugby, <laughs> golf, things like that. So 
Um, the neat thing about fall and weather is we can do a lot of this outdoors. Mm -hmm. But as you flip from recreation to community education, a lot more of that gets indoors. So you got the, the separation and the social distancing and also offering some online courses too. So um, this brochure again is, is online. You can register as we speak, go through it, a lot of great things. And again, I think once families understand that, okay, school started, now we still need that outlet of how do we recreate, how do we stay active. Uh, this is where you want to go. And what, what can't be forgot is the, the numerous adult activities that you offer too. Yeah. I mean, we talk about youth, which is a great focus, but there are normally you know, there's like cooking classes, there's adult sports, there's a whole lot of other things besides youth activities, that's for sure. Yeah, you're right. And that's the neat thing is we start from, we say, three, four years old all the way to 99 yeah. plus. And, and uh, that's, uh, that's a great thing. Again, it's a community where, where youth and adults, um, you're right, there's some different adult sports from sand volleyball this fall to softball to curling will be coming back uh, in, into play. Um, so those classes, but then again on the, on the uh, community education side, the, the language classes, the cooking classes, again, everyone signs up for these programs for different reasons. Mm -hmm. Some may be to get out of the house, some may be to socialize, some may be to exercise, mm -hmm. things like that. So that's what's neat about what we do is we offer it for all, all people. And we always ask for input too. If someone uh, has an idea or a thought or a class suggestion, you know, please bring that to us because mm -hmm. we'd like to hear that feedback and clearly we've got to find instructors and things like that space. But no, it's, it's been great and, and today's a big day as we, we roll out the uh, fall brochure. Sure, yep, thanks Cam. Uh, so if a high schooler or a college student wanted to get involved looking for some seasonal part-time work, what kind of um, opportunities do you have for that 15 year old to like 22 year old or whatever? I guess there is no really age for that kind of thing. But. Yeah, yeah, you know, it's a great question because um, just in my position alone in, in a given 12 months, I believe I hire over like 125 seasonal temporary employees. So that's a big amount of people that are coming through um, our department and our program. So the big thing there is, is go online. So now everything is online where you uh, register online on the city uh, page, you, you go and fill your application out. And then once you fill out that application out, that comes to us coordinators and then we go through that based on your interest, and then uh, we'll connect with them. But uh, a lot of jobs that we have are, you know, we were talking before show, like ice attendant um, at the Red Baron, ice attendants, um, officials. We never have enough officials, be it any sport, youth or adult, umpires, things like that. And we know with the State High School League, officials, there's a shortage, mm -hmm. you know, and, and getting younger people involved in those. Um, we've got youth coaches, supervisors with our camps and clinics. Also, um, uh, lifeguards, you know, we, we just wrapped up the aquatic mm -hmm. center, but mm -hmm. you just never have enough lifeguards. So um, the neat thing is you can get them at 15 at the high school. We try to connect with them out here at the college so we can um, use them a few years, you know, so um, they can kind of get their feet wet, see what it's all about. But the neat thing is a lot of these kids that were in our programs as five, six, seven, eight, nine year olds come back at 15, 16, 17, and, and they help with our program. Mm -hmm. So it kind of comes full circle. Uh, but again, you just never have enough help. You know, you always have to kind of work around uh, the students and their schedules because we know students now are, are very busy mm -hmm. uh, with their programs and, and sports, things like that. So uh, pretty flexible. Um, so yeah, if you want to, again, check us out on the city webpage uh, under the job listings tab, and we'd love to hear from everybody. Okay, great. So grew up here in the 80s. Uh, Parks and trails have evolved at a whole new level in and around town. Um, you know, they go as far north of SMSU to all the way to Camden State Park. Let's talk about that. Uh, I mean, and then also the bike share program that goes with it. You're right. You know, and, and, and it's it's evolved from 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 that many years ago. You age yourself a little bit. No. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, I'm the same way because uh, um, any park you go to, any trail, there's always people on it. Mm -hmm. I, I live close to... Uh, the trails leading out to Camden State Park, and any time, any day, people are using them. So we're, mm -hmm. we're excited for that. Um, we've done some different trail counters, and Studio One guys have helped us out do a few shows on that, where the, uh, the, the bridge over Highway 23, we did a two-year study, and I believe there's like 36,000 wow. passes just alone on that bridge. Um, the trail going out to Camden State Park right across from County Road 7, we've done a, a study on that. It was like 25,000 passes in a year. So it just tells you the amount of traffic coming and going on those trails. So uh, it's nice to have. We've got a trail counter that 
you know, collects that data, so it's always nice to move that around. Um, but again, the, the trails within the parks, if it's Independence Park, I challenge anyone to go out to Independence Park and not see someone walking around the ponds. Mm -hmm. You know, Freedom Park and Justice now have uh, great trails within their parks as well. So um, the, the quarantine and the COVID and all that stuff back in March, if you would talk to the guys at the bike shop, it was just a craze with everybody looking to do something a little different, getting outside. And, and the, uh, I know a lot of bikes were back ordered till just this last month based on just how many people were out using the bikes. And not only bikes, but rollerblading, walking, you know, skateboarding, things like that. So um, that's been a plus this summer. And then, like you mentioned, the bike share program, of course, with the COVID-19 uh, issues, we did not offer our bike share this uh this spring and summer mm, so we're right. going to re uh bring that out you know next spring and, and have some th some things in place but uh, we did have three locations at american uh the ymca and the bike shop we'll announce as we get through the winter and the spring a couple more locations a couple more things up our sleeves there on that bike share program so um, that was great um participation amongst uh, the people using the bike share within marshall so we kicked it off last year we took a hiatus this year, and then we'll hopefully be back, you know, next April. Sure. Good. Last question. Um, collaborations are pretty important with businesses, you know, citywide. How important are collaborations with Marshall Community Services? I know in the past, you know, my, whether it's ECFE or it could be the YMCA, you collaborate with a lot of businesses. Yeah, you're, you're spot on, and, and that's really what we do, and, and we do it well, is we work with everybody. You know, clearly we're, we've got the joint partnership with the Marshall Public Schools, so we're always working with the schools with, within their facilities and their, their programs, and uh, I work hand-in-hand -hand with virtually every uh, coach within the, the Tiger uh, Athletic Department. And then, like you mentioned, just underneath our umbrella, you know, ABE, you know, ECFE, Studio One, um, the list goes on and on just within our umbrella. Um, but then you've got the YMCA's SMSU um, businesses. We're always collaborating with businesses. Um, we, we always challenge them, like, we're here to help you guys. You know, if you've got uh, ideas or thoughts or things that we can collaborate with, we're all ears. So um, that's, that's the neat thing about what we do is we collaborate, we co-sponsor, and uh, that's really what makes community services is go, really. Good. So I guess the message is pretty clear. You know, there are lots of opportunities for your kids, yourself, your parents, or whatever the case is, depending on the, you know, what the watcher is watching us today. But a lot of different opportunities here through Marshall Community Services, which can be, this guide can be found online. You can do your um, online registration. As Cam mentioned, the booklet should be hitting your mailbox here in the next few days. Or, you, you know, I mean, they could stop by City Hall and pick one up, too. Yeah, yeah, and give us a call at 537-6767. Uh, We're open uh, Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. We'd be glad to help you over the phone, like you said, online. A lot of different ways to register for our programs. Perfect. Good. Thanks, Cam. So let's talk about a little bit what's going on in September. Uh, and uh, we'll get... So the fall sports are back, kind of, right? So some of the bigger ones are not going to be in play, volleyball and football specifically. But sports like cross country, clay target, soccer, tennis are coming back this fall. Um, unfortunately, some of those... Uh, fans, the, the, there's a fan limit to a lot of them. I know that each kid gets like a couple tickets that they can give to their family members. But either way, cheer on the Tigers. Uh, and then uh, come January 1st, hopefully we'll be able to cheer on the, the Mustangs as well. Traveling Trivia will be back at the Hitching Post on September 10th. So if you're um, looking for a, a fun night out, uh, go get a good meal with your with your friends, go to the Hitching Post on September 10th and, and um, um, play some traveling trivia. Golf, more golf tournaments are coming back this upcoming fall. Uh, I'm sorry, in September, SMSU baseball tourney is on the 12th. SMSU wrestling is on September 19th. And the Vera Foundation tournament is on September 14th. Do you ever golf? You know, I wish I had time to golf. <laughs> right? <laughs> Four kids, uh, 11 and under, uh, 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 take up a lot of my time. Right, someday. <laughs> Um, Shoot for Hope event. This is a, a brand new event through Hope Harbor, a really important organization here in town. They partnered with a shooter sporting place uh, for an event on Friday, September 18th. This is a fundraiser. Uh, their typical fundraiser this fall, I'm guessing, won't happen. Um, so get out there and make sure you still uh, take advantage of, of this kind of event and support our local nonprofits here in the Marshall area. 
And then one chamber event of note, we are gonna have a return of our business after hours. So we have a business after hours normally on a monthly basis. This we're gonna have at Shays. Shays, there's still lots of space. Uh, I think you can fit up to 60 people uh, at Shays at a time. So come on out to Shays on September 24th and it'll be the return of our business after hours event. So with that, Cam, I sure do appreciate you being my guest today. Absolutely. And uh, for any other updates, you can look on our website at marshallmn.org. You can also go to visitmarshallmn.com. I'm going to throw one more website at you since you're writing this all down, is marshsports.com. Marshsports.com gives you a really good uh, general uh, view of the calendar of sports in the area. So that's a really good one to take a look at as well. So. Uh, next month, I have Quentin Brunsville. He's the Marshal Chief Police. That's so going to be my guest. It, of course, every October is the uh, Fire Prevention Week. is always the first week of October, so it'll be a good time to touch base with Quentin. So with that, thanks again, Cam, and we'll see you in October. <laughs>